Hi, in this video I'll be looking at the Fostex CR500, CDR and CDRW master recorder in more detail. So this video is a part 2 of the first video on the Fostex CR500. And this device can also be used as a CD player as well as a recorder. This disc I recorded earlier on this machine and now it's in playback mode. First it will scan the disc to confirm that the disc is empty or like in this case already recorded and now the disc can be played back. And at the moment I've got the volume muted. And this device can record on both CDR and CDRW discs, but more about that later. But first, let's have a look at it, or its front panel or fascia to be precise. On the left is the power on off button and to the right is a USB port and that is the input for a keyboard. And that is a tight fit, this unit is uh, 4.8 kilograms in weight. The keyboard can be used to access the menu. A headphone jack for monitoring or editing recordings on a 6.35 millimeter headphone jack and a volume control knob next to that jack for those headphones. The next two knobs are for level input for left channel and right channel. And further to the right is the open close for the disc drawer. Access light as well as a couple of buttons uh, related to playback. The display panel with elapsed time counter, track listing and peak level meters as well as indicators for format type. And that is a liquid crystal display with adjustable contrast. Further to the right, and it's with this top button here that you adjust the contrast on the LCD display. Here are the stop play, rewind, fast forward, skip and search buttons, as well as the record ready button. This is a button you press to get your levels um, and everything in order. And the red button below that is a record button which actually does the recording when you press that. And this group of buttons is for memory set and editing. And all these buttons, I have to say, have a very precise and positive feel to them. And here are the recording format type details. You can pause on that and read that if you like. I have found that CDRWs play back fine and straight away. However, CDR discs I was using didn't want to play back immediately, but we're good to play after some time has passed. And that was on the 
NADC 525B CD player that I was trying to play him back on. Who knows? But let's just say I want to record on his CDRW. The machine will first have to check if it's a pre-recorded disc or if it's an empty disc. Then I'll have to select the format to CDDA for playback on regular CD players. And confirm that with a unit. All this can be done on the navigation button on the unit itself or you can plug in the keyboard and do the same thing on the keyboard. Now I'm using the keyboard for navigation. And this is what I'm navigating through. And here's this again. You can pause on that if you want. Yeah, it was great to get an owner's manual with this uh, device as well. So now I'll confirm that. And now press the record ready button. I can check on the display. I am recording in the right format. And now I can feed some analog source and set the recording levels. And the recording level should be set at zero to the right of the scale. However, that's the best I can do. And it's not the fault of this machine here, but rather, let's just say it's a, mo it's a mobile phone that I'm recording off. That's the problem. That's got its volume set at maximum and it's just not uh, hitting zero at all. And that became a problem with the mobile phones a couple of years ago where um, whoever sends the mobile updates to your phone, they decided um, they were so worried about you that your headphones go too loud and they um, just did that, reduced the volume on your headphones and that's a problem. I remember this event because I was actually really disappointed when they reduced the uh, volume on the headphones, on, uh, on the phones. But okay, that's a level set. That's the best I can do. Okay, so I got a bit excited and didn't actually press the record button. So here we go. Level set, source in, and press record, and it's recording now. And the display once again shows the elapsed time and the recording time left on the disc itself. So I'm going to stop this here, rewind,
and this is what fast forward and rewind sounds on the machine. Fast forward. And rewind. So a lot different than on a regular CD player because this is actually what it's doing fast forwarding or rewinding not skipping through any material. So let's just say this is all I wanted to record on this CD then I would have to go to disk utility and select um, finalize in the options in the menu options and then finalize the recording after it's finalized there's not much you can do with the recording anymore it's more or less recorded for good and this peak hold on the peak level meters is an interesting option you can set it in between one in nine seconds to hold the peak on the level meters it's good for recording that recording level at minus 12 db that's for a digital source um, and that's preset automatically And here, this is how you finalize the recording. And it's asking you if you're sure if you want to do that. And here you can see some of the other options in the menu. And the manual says in a CD DA format, it's impossible to um, edit names. Here is a disc I've recorded earlier. And as you can see the disc is full. And I want to finalize the recording on this disc. And that is almost finalized now. Let's have a look at the specifications of the unit. And you can pause on that if you'd like to see any of the details. And let's have a look at the back of the unit and its connectors. Looking at the top row of analog connectors balanced input and output on XLR connectors and unbalanced input and output on RCA as well as digital input and output on XLR below. And the power plug and the tag. So that's a pretty cool unit overall. I like it. So I ended up getting some compatible feet for it and fitted them. And these are much better than those oversized feet that I initially fitted. Thank you for watching and see you in the next or the previous video.